Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us. With me today are my colleagues, California Attorney General Rob Bonta, Illinois Attorney General Kwame Raoul, District of Columbia Attorney General Brian Schwab, and Massachusetts Attorney General Andrea Campbell. Today, we are announcing a historic $462 million settlement with six states and the District of Columbia with Juul for causing a nationwide youth vaping epidemic. Those states are New York, California, Illinois, Massachusetts, New Mexico, Colorado, and the District of Columbia. New York alone will receive $112 million. This is the largest multi-state settlement with Juul and includes the most stringent restrictions on the company's marketing and sales to protect and to prevent minors from vaping. Taking a page out of Big Tobacco's playbook, Juul misled consumers about the health risk of their products. The e-cigarette company falsely led consumers to believe that its vapes were safer than cigarettes and contained less nicotine. However, just one pod of Juul contains as much nicotine as a whole pack of cigarettes. Juul targeted youth by glamorizing vaping with colorful ads featuring young models at flashy parties in New York City and the Hamptons, all while downplaying the harmful effects of vaping. In at least one New York City school, a Juul representative falsely told high school freshmen that its products were safer than cigarettes. Juul's lies led to a nationwide public health crisis and put addictive products in the hands of minors who thought they were doing something harmless. E-cigarette use amongst middle and high school students more than doubled after Juul was first introduced in 2015. The latest CDC data from 2022 shows that nationwide, minors and youth adults still have the highest e-cigarette usage rates of any age group. The CDC reports that nationwide, one in seven high school students have used e-cigarettes in the last 30 days. Here in New York, almost one in four high school students reported vaping nicotine in 2020. In schoolyards, basketball courts, near neighborhood bodegas, teenagers can be seen passing e-cigarettes to each other. We know the dangers of nicotine, and we know that this habit can be carried into adulthood and has serious health effects. There is no doubt that Juul played a central role in the youth vaping epidemic. Today, Juul is paying for the widespread harm it caused and will undergo severe restrictions on its marketing and sales practices. Today's agreement requires Juul to pay $460 million to six states and the District of Columbia. New York will receive $112.7 million over an eight-year period with $14 million in the next 90 days, the vast majority of which will fund programs that help young New Yorkers struggling to quit finally put their vapes down and prevent youth vaping and educate individuals about the harms of vaping. Our agreement also includes some of the toughest marketing and sales restrictions on the company. Juul cannot directly or indirectly target youth in its marketing fund or operate youth education and prevention programs, and portray anyone under the age of 35 in its promotional materials. The agreement also requires Juul to take a number of measures to secure products behind store counters and verify the ages of individuals buying its products. This agreement also places the same restrictions on Juul's former top directors, executives, and any business they own or operate that sells nicotine products. New Yorkers' safety and well-being will always be my top priority, and companies that hurt New Yorkers and harm our children will be held accountable. This agreement will protect our kids and help future generations understand the harms of vaping and nicotine and foster healthier and thriving communities in New York and across the country. I want to thank all of the advocates and parents who sounded the alarm on, this on these dangerous products. And now, I'd like to introduce my colleague, California Attorney General Rob Bonta.
Thank you, AG James, for your friendship, your leadership, your partnership um, on this issue and so many others. I want to thank everyone here for joining us today. And I want to start by expressing my gratitude to everyone who made this historic $462 million settlement with Jewel possible. We don't get to a place like this alone. Uh, it's through collaboration and partnership and teaming up uh, that we get here. I want to thank the County of Los Angeles and Los Angeles District Attorney uh, who joined us in our lawsuit. The six states who are our partners in negotiations, Colorado. Colorado, the District of Columbia, Illinois, Massachusetts, New Mexico, and New York. Uh, my predecessor and the current Secretary of the Department of Health and Human Services, Javier Becerra, who kicked off this effort during his time as Attorney General, and of course, my incredible team at the California Department of Justice, who has worked tirelessly for this victory. Today, I'm here as California's Attorney General, but I'm also here as a father of three, a father who is disgusted that uh, where I see my son and daughter's jewel simply saw dollar signs. A father who's enraged by the nefarious tactics jewel deployed to hook our children on their products. Bright, attractive ads that flaunted young people enjoying the e-cigarettes, giveaways at concerts and festivals, sleek, easily concealed products. A recipe that ratcheted up the amount of nicotine while using a chemical formulation that made it easier for new users to stomach all masked with fun flavors. I'm proud to stand up here today with a message to e-cigarette and vaping manufacturers. If you set your sights on our children, we will set our sights on you. We won't stand by and let e-cigarette companies put their profits over the health and well-being of our children. We won't let one of the largest e-cigarette manufacturers in the country get away with campaigns that aimed to entice young people to their addictive products. Not when we know smoking is the number one preventable killer in the US, not when we know e-cigarettes have become the most popular tobacco product for young people, not when in 2019, 600,000 Americans under 21 used Juul daily, a rate 2.5 times greater than people 25 to 34 years old. Our nation had spent decades trying to rein in youth smoking rates, only to have it spike up after Juul emerged on the scene. In 2017, as they led the pack in e-cigarette sales, we witnessed a concurrent surge in the number of 14 to 17 year olds who were new daily e-cigarette smokers. By sidestepping e age verification procedures, sending promotional emails to customers they knew were under age, operating without tobacco licenses required by California and using smoke and mirror tricks to deceive consumers. Juul reignited an epidemic of youth nicotine use. It was under control until Juul re-sparked it. They didn't just take a page out of Big Tobacco's playbook, they took the whole thing. Today's $462 million settlement is a step forward in bringing Juul to justice, in holding the company accountable for breaking laws and taking advantage of an entire generation. With this agreement, California will receive $175.8 million for e-cigarette research, education, and enforcement the biggest state settlement yet reached with Juul. Funding that'll help our state heal from harm done and prevent more young people from starting down a path of addiction that can take a lifetime to end. This settlement also prohibits Juul from targeting our youth in future advertising and promotional campaigns, putting an end to harmful business practices that lure in our children to better their bottom line. Today, we're turning the page and making it clear that in California, young people will always come before corporate profits. I wanna thank again, our many partners in this fight. Thank you for sharing our dedication to keeping young people safe and keeping harmful corporations in check. To parents in California and across the nation, hear this. We won't let e-cigarette companies hook our children with their dangerous marketing strategies and get away with it. The declining health and well-being of millions of teens and young adults will not be a footnote in Juul's business plans. Thank you all. And now I'd like to turn it over to my colleague from Illinois, Attorney General Kwame Raoul. Thank you, General Bonta, and thank you, General James, for convening us. Um, this settlement is a culmination of several years of focused efforts in our respective states to hold Juul accountable for its leading role in youth vaping epidemic. For me, it's quite personal because the product had entered my own home because of my teenagers. So directing my consumer division to initiate an, an investigation into Juul was a day one priority for me after I was sworn in in January of 2019. 
Within months of taking office, we served an extensive civil investigative demand on the company, and before the end of 2019, we filed suit. We've been aggressively litigating against them in Illinois since. Uh, from lit litigating within Illinois to working collaboratively with uh, my fellow AGs, uh, particularly on working on the important injunctive terms. I, I, I wanna thank my staff for all of their efforts. As, as important as money is to hold bad actors accountable and 67.6 million will be coming uh, to the state of Illinois, changing conduct is more so, particularly with this industry. And Juul launched its e-cigarette business in 2015, targeting minors with their advertising. By the end of 2018, Juul was so dominant that it held more than 75% of the share of the market. And Juul's marketing to youth, unfortunately, was very successful. A mul multiple studies demonstrate how Juul dramatically increased youth e-cigarette usage after they entered the market. In 2019, uh, nearly half, 49.2% of Illinois high school students reported having used an electronic vapor product. Claims of e-cigarettes being a smoking cessation device are false, are false, particularly with regards to our youth. After decades of successful work in reducing used cigarette usage, Juul's products and practices led to e-cigarettes becoming a gateway to the traditional combustible cigarette use for unsuspecting youth. By 2017, e-cigarettes became the most common first tobacco product used by you. One 2018 study spe specific to Juul users found that 63% of 15 to 24 year olds did not know that nicotine was present in, was present in Juul products. The percentage of adolescents reporting using an e-cigarette as their first tobacco product increased from 27.2% in 2014, before Juul entered the market, to 78.3% in 2019. A 2016 study showed that among youth who had never smoked a cigarette by, tw by 12th grade, recent vapors were four times more likely to report cigarette smoking a year later. Our efforts culminating in a settlement announced today are one step in fighting the epidemic of youth vaping. Both the injunctive terms and the money Juul must pay will help these states combat the pernicious problem which Juul largely helped create. At this point, I wanna uh, pass it on to my colleague in the District of Columbia, Attorney General Brian Schwab. Thank you, General Raul. I'm grateful to be here with my friends and colleagues from New York, California, Illinois, and Massachusetts. Thank you in particular to AG James for convening us and for your leadership. One of my top priorities as the Attorney General for the District of Columbia is making sure young people here in the nation's capital grow up healthy and hopeful about their futures. The District of Columbia is fortunate to have some of the strongest consumer protection laws in the country. And when companies like Juul prey on and manipulate the district's residents, and in particular, our children, all in furtherance of profit, my office will use every legal tool available to hold them accountable. Clearly, this is a national issue, and district kids deserve to be safe like kids across the country. They deserve the same rights and the same opportunities as children across the country. This is only gonna be fully possible when the District of Columbia is recognized as a state like the other states in this country. But in the meantime, the district residents and the Office of Attorney General is gonna stand shoulder to shoulder with other states and other state AGs to take on issues that impact Americans and district residents. Jules actions were a replay of the big tobacco playbook that state AGs took on in the 90s and put an end to a concerted industry-wide effort to manipulate for sales the buying practices of consumers. The AG's efforts back then led to years of public health success 
in driving down tobacco use by young people. But just as tobacco used Joe Camel and other uh, tools to make smoking look cool, Juul came along in 2015 and targeted kids with deceptive, manipulative social media marketing designed to make its e-cigarettes seem trendy and cool and to get children highly addicted to a dangerous product. Juul made its products easy for teenagers to buy online. Sadly, Juul was successful in its efforts, quickly becoming the largest e-cigarette company in the years after its launch and addicting an entire generation to harmful e-cigarettes, reversing a decades-long trend of declining teen smoking rates and sparking a public health emergency. At the time the District of Columbia filed our lawsuit, the principal of our largest high school estimated that more than half of the school's juniors and seniors were using e-cigarettes, mostly Juul. Juul knew all along how dangerous it's, and addictive its products were. It knew its online verification systems were riddled with flaws and loopholes that allowed kids of any age to purchase the products. It knew but did not care. It chose to prioritize profits over kids' health and safety. Worse, Juul not only didn't care, it actively tried to hide its truth from consumers. It lied about its efforts to combat youth smoking and to stop minors from buying its products. Today, Juul is finally being held accountable for its actions. As a result of our joint efforts, hundreds of millions of dollars will now go directly towards mitigating the public health damage caused by Juul's practices. $15.2 million to the residents of the District of Columbia. I'm grateful for the hard work of the lawyers and professionals in the Office of Attorney General in collaboration with our colleagues in state AG offices across the country. And now I wanna turn it over to my friend, the Attorney General from Massachusetts, Andrea Campbell. Thank you, A.G. Schwab, and thank, thank you, of course, to A.G. James for your leadership in convening us. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us today to cover this important announcement. I'm honored to be here with my esteemed counterparts who, along with their staff, are each doing incredible work in their respective states, and, this, and today's announcement is no exception. I want to start by recognizing the staff in my office and those who have left who worked on this case, the exceptional lawyers and public servants who have put years in hard work to ensure we're doing everything in our power to hold Jewel, Jewel accountable. I can't possibly mention the whole team, but I did want to name a few. Jim Sweeney, Alda Chan, Matt Lashoff Sullivan, Sean Atwood, Noah Kopp, Adrian Butterton, Butterton Sky Karp, Bowen He, Matt Jalen, Aaron Davis, Liz Cho, Sam Schusterman, a former AGO employee, and a former AGO employee, Elise Yannette. They all worked really hard for this victory, and I'm really proud of the team. In 2018, the Massachusetts Attorney General's Office was the first office in the country to announce an investigation into Juul. And we were seeing a vaping epidemic, of course, among our kids. And Juul was the top product, the industry leader. In fact, the word jeweling had become a verb, and that was no accident. Jewel's marketing campaign was not only appealing to kids, but was targeting them, getting them started on e-cigarettes, and then getting them addicted. My office, of course, swiftly took action to stop this predatory behavior. Our investigation unveiled new pieces of Jewel's marketing plan, including how they intentionally chose models and images that appealed to young people, advertised products on websites geared towards kids, and even shipped e-cigarettes to underage youth who ordered online directly from the company. Make no mistake, Jewel's targeting of young people rolled back decades of progress in combating underage tobacco and nicotine use and has led to a nationwide public health crisis for young people all across this country. Vaping is dangerous. It's even toxic. It harms your lungs, your heart, your brain, and your development. Jewel knew all of this and still intentionally sold their products to young people. They targeted those young people and they hooked them on Juul products to ensure the continued and long-term use of vapes by one of our youngest, most vulnerable population. populations. Today marks the next chapter to hold this company accountable for their wrongdoing. 
This settlement will deliver $41 million to Massachusetts, with a portion of that money funding vaping addiction services, including outreach, education, and treatment. It also includes restrictions on youth marketing and sales and prohibitions on sponsorships and free giveaways, unannounced compliance checks, and a robust document depository so that the world can see the documents we uncovered through that investigation. But of course, we won't stop here. My office, along with several colleagues who are on this Zoom, and of course, those who are not, are in conversations with advocates, experts, community organizations to understand how this money can best be used to help prevent and address the addiction crisis this company caused. And here in Massachusetts, we've strengthened our laws with regard to e-cigarettes and will continue to enforce those laws to ensure that no company can again use, can again use Jules' playbook to entice our young people to use these addictive and harmful products. One of the top priorities of my office will continue to be protecting the health and the safety of our young people. Juul is the most significant player in the vaping industry, and this investigation has helped us go after other bad actors to stop this epidemic once and for all. We all need to and will work together to shield the next generation from those who attempt to target and harm them across every industry, including mobile sports gaming, social media apps, algorithms, and so much more. When there are unlawful practices, our offices will step up. It is our hope that with the attorneys generals from across the country standing together, we'll protect our young people and empower them to live healthy and prosperous lives. I am grateful to all of my colleagues on the Zoom, their leadership and their work to protect our young people and all of our residents. Thank you. Thank you, A.G. Campbell. I also want to recognize and thank uh, the team that negotiated this settlement, the senior advisor and special counsel, Umair Khan, Assistant Attorney General Haley DeCracker and uh, Noah Pope, and Healthcare Deputy Bureau Chief Leslie Ann Cachola. At this point in time, we will take some questions. Please identify your outlet and please direct your question to the relevant party. Thank you, Attorney General. Just a reminder, please use the raise hand function to express that you would like to ask a question. We'll give a moment for that to fill up. Thank you. Our first question will come from Beatrice Peterson. Beatrice, you can unmute and talk, please. Hey, can you hear me? Hi. Um, my name is Beatrice Peterson with ABC News. Um, my question to you guys is, how do you all see um, the funds being used in your individual states? Do you have any specific programs you guys uh, plan on using for the funds, uh, specifically to help these children who were affected by um, Jules' targeted ads? The funding will be used in the state of New York to help government agencies and educational organizations to prevent young vaping, to support community and school-based anti-vaping programs, to help individuals quit vaping, to help localities and, and counties enforce vaping laws and regulations, and monitor and research efforts to, re to reduce vaping, working very closely with our Department of Health. Um, I don't know if my colleagues also want to answer that question. Yeah, uh, Rob Bonta, California Attorney General, I can just add that uh, the funds will be used in California for programs to educate youth about the harms of vaping and to help them quit its use, enforcement work, um, to implement California's ban on a retail sale of flavored nicotine products, and also uh, to conduct research into health effects of the use of e-cigarettes by youth. Th those are some of the buckets that we'll uh, be deploying the funds for. We will have similar uses in a, a, a state of Illinois, both with regards to awareness, uh, treatment, and uh, working along with our uh, public health officials, our, uh, our school districts, and our community partners. Similarly, here in the District of Columbia, 
the settlement monies will go to programs to provide cessation assistance to district residents who were exposed to vaping, education and prevention programs, research programs, programs and equipment that are designed to abate the impact of the electronic uh, nicotine de uh, delivery systems or ENDS and efforts to mitigate the impact on District of Columbia children of being addicted to nicotine. And in Massachusetts, similar to my other colleagues, uh, the resources will be used for enforcement purposes to address, of course, uh, youth nicotine addiction. Um, but we are also in the process of still meeting with stakeholders to develop a robust comprehensive plan because we know the advocates uh, want to be a part of the discussions in terms of how we utilize those resources. And we have some time to figure that out. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question will come from Joe Gray of BET. You can unmute yourself and ask. Hi, thank you, uh, everybody, for uh, giving this uh, this press conference. My question is, um, there had been uh, reports uh, from a couple of years ago that uh, Juul and a lot of these other uh, vape companies had targeted um, uh, minority communities, Black, Brown, uh, Asian, and Indigenous communities. Uh, did your teams find uh, that uh, they actually continued this, as well as the targeting of youth communities as well? So we do not have any information that Juul specifically targeted communities of color. We do know that they specifically targeted youth in general, again, uh, with their um, colorful ads, uh, again, featuring individuals at very um, fancy parties in New York City and in the Hamptons. It was specifically targeted towards young people, um, um, and that included all individuals of all races and ethnicities. Yeah, I'll, I'll second that as well, where we, we focused on uh, the youth community generally, certainly including um, all the communities th that you mentioned, um, and the fact that Juul sold to underage consumers and targeted youth through their marketing, used inadequate age verification procedures, sent promotional emails to customers who Juul knew had not been age verified, and in California, lacked required safe tobacco licenses all to um, provide, to, to spike the, the, the youth uh, smoking um, uh, uh, epidemic once again, uh, including other communities you mentioned, sir. Thank you. Our next question will come from Michael Sisak of the Associated Press. You can unmute yourself. Attorney General James, uh, thanks for having this uh, press conference. Uh, congratulations on the settlement, um, uh, and, and don't uh, don't hate me for veering a little off topic. Um, President Trump is going to be in your office tomorrow. I was wondering if you could tell us why he's going to be there, whether you're going to be there to greet him like you Mike, were. Mike, we're doing oh, yes. on-topic questions for this press conference. Okay, well, I had to give it a shot. Do you have Thank an on-topic question? Uh, I, I do have an on-topic question, yes. Um, in terms of this settlement, where does this rank? You know, you've been going after the... Uh, uh, pharmaceutical industry uh, and other industries, where does this rank in terms of what your office has been doing to, to combat these sort of scourges on society on New York State? We do not rank our litigation. Um, as you know, all of my colleagues who are represented here today on this call, all of us um, uh, were part of a multi-state litigation against opioid manufacturers and distributors. And today we stand here to focus, uh, again, to, uh, to focus on Juul, um, uh, highlighting its harms to young people and the fact that the, Juul took a page out of Big Tobacco's playbook. Um, and it is our top priority to protect young people and to protect the to protect the general public, and we will do it again um, with regards to any products that harm our consumers. Thank you. Our next question will come from Chris Van Buskirk. Hi, uh, this is actually Steph Solis from Axios. We're watching this together. Um, I had two questions for Massachusetts Attorney General uh, Campbell. Um, one, I was wondering if you or others could speak to how the funding broke down, how Massachusetts got to 41 million. And then secondly, um, you mentioned other restrictions and prohibitions, and I'm wondering what some of those new mechanisms are, including if the prohibition is for all people or just young people. I can speak to the first question. I, I wasn't really clear on your second question. Do you wanna repeat the second question? 
We've been having some internet issues here in Massachusetts too. Absolutely. When I was talking about prohibitions, I was uh, wondering more so um, if you could elaborate on the prohibitions for giveaways and sponsorships, if that's for all uh, sporting events or all commercials or specifically ones targeting young people or involving young athletes or something. Got it. Thank you. Um, so the the first on the 41 million, um, really actually proud of the work of this team and those who, uh, and from I also from respective states on how we got to that number for Massachusetts. Um, it actually wasn't based on population for Massachusetts. It was based on just a percentage of young people that live here, the percentage of young people that are identified as being addicted to these products. So we got close to 10%, which is a little bit more than if you were just looking at population. So proud of the team. I'm, um, of course, my predecessor as well, um, and of all the other states for working in partnership on this um, and taking into account the population of young people here in Massachusetts. Uh, in terms of the free giveaways, the, the injunctive, injunctive relief we're talking about in the context of this case has to do with tobacco, vaping, e-cigarettes, et cetera. But what we have learned from this case is useful to other industries that target young people. Um, and so that's really important. I obviously named mobile sports betting, which we're in the midst of uh, getting that off the ground here in Massachusetts, um, other types of industries where young people are being targeted, social media apps or applications, I should say, are being designed to target young people when they're not supposed to be on these platforms when they're not supposed to be buying certain products. So we've learned a lot from here. Um, that can be used from this case, I should say, that will be useful to protect our young people in other industries. And that's really, um, really significant going forward in terms of some of our consumer protection priorities. Thank you. Our final question will come from Eric Flack. Hi, my name is Eric Flack. I'm from WUSA 9 in Washington, D.C., and this question is aimed uh, at Attorney General Brian Schwab, although I welcome anybody's comments. Uh, Attorney General Schwab, I, I spoke with a Juul spokesperson this morning, and they characterized this as kind of a company reset, trying to rights, uh, correct the rights of the uh, wrongs of the past, and as you know, it's the latest in a number of uh, settlements they've reached. Uh, my question is, are you satisfied that uh, these sorts of practices will not continue uh, into the future. And I also wonder if there's a concern that the damage has already been done as far as uh, addiction and the impact on public health. Well, Eric, thank you for the question. Um, of course, I'm concerned about whether or not other corporate actors are going to uh, replay the playbook we've now seen run uh, multiple times in terms of misleading young people and taking advantage of young people, putting profits over their health and well-being. Uh, I am satisfied that this settlement with Jules is a fair one. It was the result of uh, the states, several states, uh, collaborating together and being willing to file a lawsuit when the investigation of the facts warranted filing a lawsuit. Uh, but my hope is also that it sends a message to everybody that uh, using deceptive practices, uh, putting profits over people, putting people's health at risk, all in exchange for making a buck, is unacceptable. It's illegal. It's immoral. And uh, the AG for the District of Columbia, and I'm sure my colleagues on this phone call, are going to continue to lean into our obligation to protect consum consumers, particularly young people. And my hope is that the message is being received but look, if past is prologue, we know that uh, commercial actors will always uh, be tempted to pursue profits, even if it does a lot of damage along the way. And when they do, we will hold them accountable. I thank you all for this call. I thank all of the media who responded. Again, we will continue to work together. The attorney generals of the United States um, are the um, the first line of defense, and particularly as it relates to young people. We will continue to bring cases against um, Big Pharma um, to the extent that they engage in any harmful and or deceptive marketing practices. I want to thank my team, want to thank my colleagues, and want to thank you all this afternoon for this call. Have a good day.